Chris Brockman is your mic on Holy Holy Go. Here we go. Hold on, hold, hold on. on. Wait, wait for it. Oh, we still on air? Are we on the air? What's that noise? I don't know what that Who's noise up? is. Who's up first? Who's up first? Kara, I know you're not a big fan of libation. But, uh, we like to drink here yeah, on the Rich Eisen Show go. when I sit in for Rich because it makes the show go better. Well, I mean, you guys have had a bar here forever, and I don't know if you... He- even uses it right. It was so, fake iced tea, Kara. We're just doing a like a a lady who's, who lunch three martinis lunch. It's just at ten in the morning. Yeah, right? because when I think of ladies the lunch, I think that we are definitely those two. Oh or yeah. We even, no, that's TJ and Chris. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what is it? Hey now. Hey now. Hello. Also, to have two women on our radio television show at the same time is like this is. I feel is this like this, allowed? I don't think so. They might give us thirty yeah. second intervals. I'm well, just my voice has gotten so low now so maybe people way, be confused <laughs> <laughs> your voice your voice is uh it's down horse yeah it's horse how much orange juice you want in here little um, splash I, I, color. I, you know it, One not, part not OJ, so much parts, we'll just go we can, you know a little splash of juice <laughs> One part OJ, yeah, we, six we parts. can't let the body be you know Deprived of alcohol for five minutes this week. <laughs> you know, also TJ brought in some pasteurized juice. I said, not for Kara Henderson Sneed. It's no, fresh squeeze. Well, you could have told me that when I was at up. Rouse last night, too. I said, I mean, straight straight have, but I didn't. <laughs> I think that was right after the Ambien took hold. So God knows that I'm lucky to be here this morning. Thank you so much. By Chris. the way, here he makes go. a phenomenal Rockman. That's nice. You could be a bartender if you need in this in another career. Straight from coffee to alcohol. This is the way this week's Ooh, gone. Rocky makes a good mimosa. <laughs> cheers, my friend. Congratulations. Oh, yeah, we have to actually cheers. You. Hold yeah. on. Because we, we like eye contact. And, Oof. There we go. Oof. Cheers. Congratulations cheers. on Thank that. You. Oh, I don't know. On the Super Bowl win. Same. Wow. I mean, it's yes, a I whirlwind. <laughs> As you would imagine. Oh, yeah. A little bit. Mm. Matches Bad my hat. Not to take the sip. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, now we've now returned we've the body okay. to its normal <laughs> state. Getting a little shaky with that. It's been a long Ooh. week for you, Kara Henderson. No, it's Sneed. been it's been amazing. It you know you always wonder when you're a reporter. You know how does it feel? How does it feel for people when they actually achieve this thing that they've been you know thinking about their entire lives and. You know, I mean, when you're on the field after the Super Bowl, I got the chance at NFL Network to cover so many of them. And the worst interviews are the interviews that you get on the field right after the Super Bowl because people are just shell-shocked. They're shell-shocked. They, they, they cannot process that they are in one of the great moments of their lives, that they've actually gotten to the top of the mountain and... It's awesome, and the visuals are amazing, but the interviews are terrible, right? Terrible. And so I've always wondered, like, what does that feel like? And obviously, I'm, you know, I'm just married into it. I'm, I'm not the one that did anything per se, but it's a, it's a really interesting thing. It just kind of washes over you, and it just gets better and better and better as you continue to process and you allow yourself to go through you know, a period of time. And, and we've all seen, I'm sure, you know, videos of, of Aaron Donald. And to me, you know, having known him from when we drafted him to now, it's just like this weight has been lifted off of him. And he is just fully like complete. And he's got a beautiful family and he looks great with his shirt off. As we've all seen. Oh, my God. I mean, come on. I mean, come on. And it was it was hilarious. When we went to the parade the other day, which, by the way, that was his wife, Erica, who was standing by him, which is really interesting. So um, her dad is, um, you know, he was a, a coach in the league forever. So Aaron Donald's just got this amazing, amazing life. And when I got to Cal Lutheran, which is where the Rams facility is, uh, the other day when we were going to take the buses to go then be a part of the parade. And Aaron Donald already had his shirt off at 8 a.m. I'm like, we about to get lit. This is going to be so much fun. And it was everything. But you just see that it just washes over people. I was joking. I mean, a lot of people were talking about, you know, Les wearing the shirt with his face on it the other day that we had given him that had the meme on it that people have talked about. I was joking with him this morning that I'm actually wearing a, 
uh, one with his face on it today because it's literally, it's, I, for those listening on the radio, I've just got a big smiley face sweatshirt on. And he has not, I mean, he's got this like Cheshire cat kind of grin that he's had all week long. And it is, it's just this like, like, ah, uh, like relief. Part of it is I think when you lose one and you know how awful it is and you have to wait, like, the thing about the season is, you you know, for good or for bad, like you have to like get over it, whether it's a win or a loss, and you got to go play another game. But now when you don't have another game to play until September, and so you get to like rest on your laurels and, and you won the last game, it's amazing. You don't want to do that when you lose and you have to sit there with that loss for so long. So you just felt like everybody's just got this sense of completeness, which is fantastic. That's a long answer. It's a long answer, but there are so many more questions. Like, we are taught as journalists to never ask the question, how does it feel? And you brought that up, that you're now experiencing how it feels. But we are taught professionally, you never ask that question because it's a lame question. It's not specific. You're not garnering the right answer. But now that you've been able to experience on both sides... How do you resolve it? I mean, what is it like? It's, What's it like? Take us there. It's really interesting to try to, you know, I, if you're if you go into journalism, if you're a reporter, like it's it's because you love to observe people and you love to be in situations where you can see them going through things and 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 really take it in. And so to experience it for myself as well, I'm constantly like you know, vacillating between being the reporter who's down on the field in the middle of it and just, you know, wanting to document it and think through a reporter's lens, but then also experience it for yourself. And it's, it's, it's been really fun that way. You know, I, I tell people all the time, it's a blessing and a curse that I did what I did for as long as I did, because when Les comes home, he gets a press conference every night and I'm not letting him off the hook. Right. Which I'm sure a lot of nights he's like, can we just like last question, like genuinely, (laughs) he'll be like enough, but it also means that I can help, you know, in probably some different ways than, than other people who hadn't been in it. But you do, you, you know, when you see the people that you love and let's be clear about this team, I know it's the story and I know it's people, what people have been talking about and it comes across somewhat as a platitude, but the culture of this team, and I know I'm a homer, is unlike any other team I've ever been around. It does have shades of what the Patriots were like when I used to cover them, where all of a sudden, this locker room full of these just great players took over and created a culture that became the Patriot way. And we saw how that worked out pretty well, right? And that is what you've started to see with this team. This was the season where the players are the ones that took over and really started taking some of the mantle so that Sean didn't have to be everything all the time because he is such a big cult of personality, a big part of this team and why we won this game. But the players kind of took a lot of that on this year. And it helps when you have guys like Vaughn Miller who come in And they have experienced this before. And he was the one down the stretch. And a lot of you guys out there, sports fans, have read about it, where Vaughn really challenged Aaron Donald to be more vocal, to be that vocal leader, because everybody looks over to Aaron and everybody wanted to win this for him. Um, But when you bring a guy like Vaughn in who's experienced it and says, hey, like this is what it takes for us to win. And I can promise you it's addictive once you get there. You're not going to want to, you know, give it up. You're not going to want to give the trophy up. So our culture, and I mean from our training staff, through our personnel department, through our front office business people, it is the most amazing group of people that every single one of them, when you talk to them after the game, said, you know what? I want to win for that person. I'm so happy for you. I'm so happy for you. And it was, you know, I was saying to someone, I said, we're... Like, we're the good guys. Like, we really, like, came across that way. And that's the way it feels when you're a part of it. Great family men, great fathers. It's been a, it's just been the pleasure of my life to be around this group of people. Wow. Wow. 
That's incredible. Kara Henderson Sneed in on the Rich Eisen Show. Susie Schuster in for my husband, Rich. What don't we know? The best part of having you here is that you get to peel back the curtain for us. Yes. And you also know what we want to see. Right. Because you've been on the flip side. So what don't we know? Golly. I mean, you. I, where do you want me to start? Just give me any person and I can tell you a story. But here's a good one that that I, you know, that really resonated with me. Um, obviously, Odell, you know, Odell has such a big personality and he is one of the great characters in our league. And I've seen it even with our kids. Like he is just the one they want to look at, be close to. And, and man, we just got to see just how hard he worked and, you know, so many different parts of, of him, you know, down the stretch and what a big part he was of this team. And you see, if you're watching on TV, you see a picture of Odell with Matthew Stafford and he's bawling his eyes out. Right. And so when, when, when he went down in that game and, and all of us as football fans could see that he was, he was on his way to mm-hmm, potentially mm-hmm. having MVP. an MVP game. He was the one who was able to obviously make it so that they couldn't just focus on Cooper Cup. And he was such a big part of what we were able to accomplish down the stretch, which was really a credit to him. I mean, to learn our playbook and be able to operate in our system, I mean, it's calculus. Like, you have got to really be dialed in. And he made sure he was. So when he went down, I saw a look on Sean's face, which when you know Sean, he's very good at kind of, masking you know what's going on but you could just see that he was you know devastated and it's a look i hadn't seen since you know cooper cup went down um in a game a couple years ago so les always goes down um into the locker room at halftime just to kind of get the vibe be you know listen what's going what's going on what adjustments are being made and he decided because obviously odell was devastated i mean he is such an emotional And as his mom said, by the way, his mom is just an absolute badass. She is, you know, track champion from LSU. Cool, cool woman. And she was saying to me the other day, she's like, he's just so passionate. And you feel it when you're around him. And he was devastated. I mean, to to have had the journey he had to come, you know, all this way and to have it go the way it went. And Les just decided, you know what, I'm going to stay down in the locker room with him and just make sure, make sure he's okay. Obviously he's not okay, but make sure he's doing okay and really encourage him to go back out. I, you said, I encourage him to go back out because he was such a big part of it. And his being there was going to be really helpful um, for everybody on the sidelines who was devastated for him. So Les stayed down in the locker room. And so he missed the beginning of the second half. So he missed the 75 yard pass and the turnover and he gets back up, you know, into Stan Kroenke's suite where they were watching the game with his people and they're trying to tell him about what happened. And he's like, I I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. It doesn't matter. We just have to, you know, move forward from here. But, you know, I think it just it, it says a lot about the way that this team operates, like people are in it for each other. And so Odell did go back out there on the field and, and, you know, we saw him throughout the second half and, and you just felt so much for him. And even in the parade, he was on the same bus that we were. You could feel like he was, you know, just somewhat down at the beginning. But then as the day went on, when we're riding through the parade, I mean, people are like, I mean, he is someone that people are really jacked about seeing. So it was it was really cool. And by the time we got to the stage um, at the Coliseum, he had, you know, kind of turned that corner. Um, but it was, um, you know, that was a, that was a cool thing to, to hear Les talk about. Like, you know, I, I needed him to know that he had to be out there because we were not going to be, especially with the timing of the Robert Woods injury, we were not going to be down, you know, in the Super Bowl if we didn't have Odell to kind of step into that role. Sorry, my voice is, <laughs> let me take a little more, a little, little more drink here. <laughs> I have a little shams. Yeah. That might, that might help you hey, out. You, you, don't be, yeah, you don't want to be, you want to be Cheers. Be no, cheers again. Yeah. Let's cheers. It's a nice Topped one. Off, me Tell me, uh, I, I brought the good stuff for you. I wasn't going to bring any it's crap. Delightful. You know, BevMo crap for you. I brought the real <laughs> deal. We've got a little Bivki, Bivki code. You open the mums. Yeah. No, I open the mums All first. Right, we got Vu for the, you know, closer. the bubbly. When we talk parade, we can go Vu, Okay. Uh, you mentioned Les, Les Snead. I don't know if you know him or not. He's your husband. Um, 
you mentioned him. And when you think about building a team, right? And here you are at the Super Bowl. And yet you choose to start the third quarter with your injured player. And that he would lose the ability to watch so much of it in the moment. To be with a player, I think, speaks volumes about who he is as a person, uh, the architect of the team, the decision maker that he is. It's it's overwhelming to think about. I'm wondering what might be, in your opinion, the biggest misnomer about Les that you hear out there. Oh, well, I think, you know, Greg Bishop was on earlier, who was the writer for Sports Illustrated, who wrote the amazing article that was the story, you know, of, of how the team um, got here. And Greg's awesome because he was with us and, you know, I was kind of a shadow writer when we were doing the draft out of our bunk room in our house during COVID, which was hilarious. Um, but I, he, you know, I think he said it well that people have a tendency to think because it's the lazy narrative of the all in and then we mortgaging our, you know, it's, it's, if, if you know less, he is one of the most process driven, methodical people that you can meet and process is everything to him. You know, he says it all the time and I'm, I'm not sure who said it originally, but you've got to surrender, you know, and it probably is John Wooden or someone you've got to su- surrender the results to the process. And that's what they did. And this was a methodical, I mean, you know, I've been here for 10 years with him going through this build. And when you think about it, you know, it's like, you know, Aaron Donald came in at the big, towards the beginning. Johnny Hacker was the first year. I was telling him that the other day. He was our, you know, our day one guy, right? Like he's in that. He's the one, last of the Mohicans in that way. Like last of the people that was on that first team. But it, it is such a methodical build. And so this concept that he's, you know, this, you know, poker player in Vegas that's just throwing chips around is not true at all. I mean, we in the beginning. We had too many first round picks, right? Like we had two first round picks for the first couple of years because he had made that big RG3 trade right off the jump. So what he does is really see where we are in our timeline and where you are in the build. And so when he made these moves, whether it was for Matthew Stafford, which was incredible, obviously, or Jalen Ramsey or Von Miller or Odell, it's because he knows like, we're in this particular window where if we can get these particular pieces and put add them to what we already have, then we've got something really special. And they're known commodities. You knew what you were going to get with Jalen Ramsey. You knew what you were going to get with Von Miller. We've done enough research to know what we were going to get with Odell and how passionate he is about football. And when people come into our building, they know that you can like – We're not going to micromanage all these different aspects of your life. We're going to be very, very focused around our football, but we're going to allow you to be you too. We're not going to say, hey, we want this aspect of you, but if you could leave this other part of you out, that'd be great. Like, that's not who we are. We, We pull people in and let them be who they are. And the first thing you need to know is that when you walk into our building, like, like the first things first, it's football. And so people can relax into that culture. So he and Sean have really, from the beginning, created that. And I think, yet again, the long-winded answer to your question is, don't think that he is a gambler. Do not think that he's someone that's just doing something and and throwing chips around. That's That would be me. That's not him, (laughs) right? Like, he's not that way at all. Even on the bus the other day, we were joking. Everybody was partying on the bus to go down. And Les is sitting in the front seat. And I'm like, what are you doing up there? Like, could you be less fun? And he's like, <laughs> he's like, like I'm, over um, the cap.com. Stop I'm it. like, I know, come join the party. Andrew Whitworth was doing the playlist up front. And, and he's like, you know, I'm the principal. And sometimes like, or the, the teacher and the teacher needs to sit in the front of the bus when the kids go on the field trip so they can have a fun time in the back. So I'm just going to sit up here. I feel like so. that should have been like a weird Motley Crue video, whatever it was. Remember, like Rock the Teacher, and suddenly the bus goes crazy and less uh, is That's up there. basically like, what it was. Well, I'd hope so. It was, uh, yeah, we were like, we sent the kids in, to the back, and, you know, it was, uh, it was it, what a special group of people. I mean, what an amazing group of people that they've assembled. My brother's watching. He said, great job. Keep your questions shorter. 
so I'm going to keep him shorter. <laughs> well, the, he's probably, he's probably just difference. trying to don't say, not. tell her to keep her answers shorter. It's like nine years later. <laughs> nine <laughs> years <laughs> later. It's your first mimosa. We're just getting started. Oh, wait a minute. I have a podcast on Podcast One called Just Getting Started. There you go. Oh, There's nice. My Nicely done. That was accidental. Hey, um, who was your biggest surprise on the Rams as you go through this behind the scenes? Because really what we really care about is we want to know stuff that we can't know from reading SI, from watching TV, what have you. So who was my biggest prize? What do you mean? Surprise. Oh, surprise. Surprise. A surprise. Uh, you know, this is this is more personal. So I'll I'll just but I'll but I'll still say it. So when as soon as the clocks hit zero in the game and it was interesting. I mean, you guys were with us, you know, for the NFC championship game, which was amazing. Everybody that was a part of my football journey, and I've known Rich and Susie since I was 23 years old Mm -hmm. at working at ESPN as a production assistant. So I had all of you guys who were all part of our football journey, my football journey in the box. So I had you guys and Marshall was in there. Brenna Webb, who was like my best football friend and, you know, Andrew Siciliano, who really helped me through when I chose to retire um, when Les all of a sudden made that huge trade and I'm doing total access. And I'm like, yeah, I probably can't stay on total access anymore. Um, But, you know, that was emotional for me. But as soon as the clocks hit zero in the Super Bowl and I was just kind of excited, not really emotional. I turned and I looked at my son, Tate, who, you know, really well. And these guys, Brockman and Del Tufo, met him when he was like little person, like five years old. And he's been a part of every snap of every game. And he has been the number one passionate Rams fan for since he was seven years old. And he just burst into tears Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and he's going to kill me if he ever knows that I'm saying this because he's 17. Come on, mom, cringy. (laughs) But that was the moment for me. That was, it it surprised me. And then I was like, of course, of course he is. Like what you don't think what you're bringing your family through and how emotional it is for them to be a part of all this. And, you know, so for me, the, the greatest moment, it wasn't a surprise, but the greatest moment was when you're on the field after the game and you see Van Jefferson, who has to leave to go, you know, his wife just went into labor. I had just talked about it with her, you know, two days before. And she's like, oh, I'm coming to the game. And I'm like, oh, well, you know, you might need a ticket. You might need an extra ticket because it looks like you're (laughs) going to have a baby on the spot. Um, So you see him, you see Robert Woods and his young daughter on the field. And he said to me, you know, having my wife in this little baby gives me chills like having them help me through this period of time has meant everything. Seeing Matthew Stafford down there with his three little girls, seeing the Whitworths and their kids are amazing. And what a journey they've all been on together. And so it's the family. And and especially now, you know, as a wife and you see the through the lens, like we, this team is, is pretty young. And so, you see all of these people getting to go through this with the most important people in their life. Like really, really cool. Kara Henderson Sneed here on the Rich Eisen show, Susie Schuster in for Rich Eisen. You talk about this chemistry of all these people together and how it's not artificial, how it's like a real deal chemistry. I think there's so much preconceived notion about who these guys are. Right. So help us understand what it's like behind the scenes sure. with Andrew Whitworth and with Cooper Cup and Eric Weddle and obviously Matthew Stafford. So this is a this is a great story. Greg Bishop actually um, alluded to it um, a little bit earlier, talking about um, you know group of people at Nobu, right? So I get a call and it's the Tuesday after the um, NFC Championship game and it's the players' day off and it's really their last you know, day off, but they were like, you know what, we're going to take the day off because we don't need to get dialed in 10 days or however long before the Super Bowl. We're going to do that. You know, when we get dialed in, we're going to be dialed in. And so Melissa Whitworth, who is hilarious, like maybe one of my favorite people of all time. We're very close. She called me. She's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, what do you mean? I'm like, I'm, I'm driving to my, you know, my kid to school. And she's like, meet us at Nobu at five. (laughs) And I'm like, Okay, she's like, just trust me. Meet us at Nobu at five. I'm like, okay. And she's like, and I've already told Les, and I told him he's coming. He doesn't have an option. Meet us at Nobu at five. And I'm like, I'm in like LA 
like, you know, gear. I got my sweatshirt and she's like, so are we. We've been out since 10 this morning. Meet us at Nobu at five. Okay. So we show up at Nobu and it just, it was the Whitworths and the cups drew, drove up right behind us. Cooper and his wife, Anna, who is amazing. And the Staffords and us. And so we, we, the eight of us just sit down to have dinner at Nobu. And I, you know, had the chance to cover Matthew Stafford a lot when, um, when I was a reporter. And, and so I'd met him, you know, at his locker. So you know what that's like, you know, you're only getting part of somebody. And I've heard obviously over the last year, all these amazing things about him, but because of COVID, like I hadn't had the chance to really be around any of the players over the last year. And so, and they were very good about keeping everybody separated. So this was the first time that I had, I'd, I'd met his wife and got to go to a game with her. Um, she's hilarious and awesome, but I'd never met him as just a person. And I sat there and I was talking to him about a variety of things. And I was like, I get it. I get it. He is the most laid back, easygoing, like fun to be around, but just like easy person I've ever met. And, you know, so we're all sitting there and he looks at me and he goes, I'm really embarrassed. And I said, why? He's like, we went out this morning for breakfast. We didn't think we were just going to be hanging out all day. We thought we were just going to get a cup of coffee and a donut. And here we are sitting in the nicest restaurant, you know, in Malibu. And he's like, and I'm in like, like a, just a raggedy, like hooded sweatshirt. And I was like, Oh honey. Welcome oh sweetie. To Malibu. Oh sweetie. Very like cute. this is LA. Like you've got to understand something. Like if you can show up at Nobu and end up in the be- at the best table in 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 the building for eight people, and you can have a hooded sweatshirt on. That's when you know <laughs> you've you've gotten somewhere in L.A. Because last we were there one night, and it may have been the night we were with you and Rich, and we look over and there's Bill Gates. Yep, yep. and he's got a hoodie on. I said Bill Gates <laughs> had a hoodie on here. I think you're going to be just fine. But that tells you something about him too. Like they're all he's just. And you looked around and all the women at this table are very alpha. I mean, I'm probably like the alpha light of the group. I mean, Anna is fierce. She's hilarious and awesome. She was a track star at Arkansas before she went back and, and you know, went to help Cooper knowing what he was going to be. Melissa Whitworth is a force of nature and so fun. Very Louisiana. She was Miss Louisiana. And she is would be right here with us having a cocktail. And Kelly Stafford, I mean, if you don't know about Kelly Stafford, you haven't been paying attention. And she is just, you know, amazing and and fun and, you know, bold and just will give zero whatevers, you know, like she will come after you if she wants to. And so you've got these alpha women and then you look around the table at the men and they're just all these very kind of humble, low key competent, you know, confident guys. And I'm like, I get it. I get it. Does you that know, make sense? It's like all these alpha women and all of these just like laid back, like, you know, guys. And it's a great, it's a great mix. I think you know this better than anyone. If you cover sports and it really varies okay. per sport, very much so in football because it's a once a week game and because of the nature of the teams the women provide the ability for the guys to go out, do their practice, go on the road. It's very different than basketball or than baseball. I don't know as much about hockey. I mean, I've covered five hockey games in my life, but I know that for football, it's that basis of it's oftentimes that group of women that provides that ability. There's no doubt. And it's, um, you know, it's a, it's a, I mean, obviously I, we went to Seattle for a game and I went with Anna, Melissa and Kelly. And it was the first time I'd met Kelly. It's actually very funny. She told the story on her podcast. We were all flying up together. And, you know, when she came on the plane, she didn't realize who I was. And Matthew is mortified by this story because she had no idea. I mean, she just was coming in, you know, at the last second, she's got three young kids. So I'm sure she was like all of us, like coming in on two wheels And so she got on the plane and we all start talking about, you know, football and the Rams. And I go to use the restroom and she turns to Mel and she goes, man, 
your friend knows a lot about the Rams. <laughs> right? I'm like talking about, well, you know, the second cornerback in the D to D then, you know, the special teams guys. And she's like, I mean, she's really dialed in on the Rams. And she's like, that's less his wife. And, you know, and, and she was mortified. It was funny, but, but you, when I went to a game with those guys and we were sitting in the stands in Seattle and that's when I was like, okay, I'm never going to do that again because we're lucky that, we got out of there without me throwing hands, right? Like you just get real, like you get emotional and these are your people out there and people are talking about him. I'm like, I don't need to do that again. Um, but you saw them go through, I mean, it's one thing, I mean, yes, you know, it's my, my husband's built the team, blah, blah, blah. But when these are their people out there putting their bodies on the line and I just got such a different appreciation for how stressful that is. And that's, I think, the difference in football. It's it's such a physical thing. So they have to be so many different things. They've got to be the CEO of Whitworth Incorporated. They've got to be the, you know, Kelly's a, a registered nurse. So I'm sure that has come into play many, many times. I mean, Matthew's the toughest player I've been around in recent years. And so... You have to be so many different things, and it's so taxing physically, mentally, emotionally. So, you know, the women of the group really do play such a huge role in the success of a team. We're going to start looking at behind-the-scenes photos from the parade. Oh, good stuff. And, And the question, of course, is what's it like when it becomes personal? Because you've covered these parades. It's so different when you're covering the parade. But when you care about it, I can't even imagine. Well, you know, it's fun. I, we decided we were like, you know what? Like there are parade rules, which are basically like there are no rules. Right. Like, you about if that. you're going to be in a Super Bowl parade, like sure any talk. normal thing is just throw it out the window. So, you know, the, the meme that's been making its rounds of, of less with the, you know, well, for lack of a better way of putting it, screw them picks yes, thing, which yes. people actually think he said, which of course he didn't say. Right. There it is. So. He actually decided he was going to wear that for the parade. Yeah, which bold is, decisions. I know a guy named Rich Eisen who likes to wear. Oh, that's what that I was laughing earlier name. when I saw Rich wear the shirt with his <laughs> with his own you know little avatar on yeah. it. But so not less to wear. Like you know less well. Like so not like him to wear that. So that's what we were like. This is hilarious. You've got to do that. I mean, if you're ever going to wear that shirt, so hilarious. It's today. Now's the day. Right? It's parade rules. Like you can wear that in the crowd. Obviously, we he was doing it because he knew the crowd and the fans had been so into it. And of course there, you know, there was a nice chant that had emanated along the way. And so what was really cool, and I know everybody wants to show pictures of a particular spot and a particular street and whatever, whatever, and there aren't that many fans. Well, the reason was when we started at the edge of, of USC, you know, there were fans and then it build, it was building and building and building as we went. And all the fans that were at the beginning of the parade, because it's slow enough it wasn't like that great shot that they had of the Braves bus that went like 40 miles an hour past the fans <laughs> yeah. like we were obviously going slowly so all those people were running too and they were in and, and so as you were going through the parade route the noise started I'm getting chills thinking about it and then it just built into this kind of like deafening roar by the time you got towards the end that was just constant and we're all looking at each other like this is like to, it's just such a like awesome experience and you see these fans and some of them you even recognize whether it's from you know Twitter and communicating with them on Twitter or you've seen them at games or they're the big fans and you can see you know you can p- pick certain people out of the crowd and and kind of let them know that like you see them and that's what I was saying the last like oh look at that guy I, I told you about this guy there he is there's that guy and you're you're specifically, and there's the, you know, the, we were on a camp, college campus, so the kids are hanging off the balconies. It was so much fun. And, you know, the joy that you saw in the players to just be able to, you know, let the steam off. But then also, like, our bus, oh, and this is a great picture. This is Odell Cooper, Van Jefferson, for those who um, are not watching, right? Like, th- these guys had such a good time together. But then also, like, all the personnel guys were on our bus, right? Like these are the guys who are the scouts, who are the behind the scenes guys. And as one of one of our, you know, main logistics um, people was saying, they were like, 
Oh, the personnel bus had a vibe. The personnel bus had a real <laughs> vibe, and it was great. And this is this is Chris Shula, right? Like this is the grandson of Don Shula, who's one of our linebackers coach, and he had a full cooler. Like people were showing up at the facility with I'm like with like massive suitcases full of like champagne, and and behind him, this is great. So behind him is Odell's mom with a backwards hat. That's Odell's girlfriend who is going to. We were worried. She's this is pre- funny. She's very pregnant. Yeah. She is very pregnant as yeah. well. Like we we were worried on the bus on the way there. They were on our bus. Andrew Whitworth and I were joking. I said, "Okay, let's YouTube how to deliver a baby." <laughs> and if oh god, and if, and if, if it Dr. does Big happen, Big would be amazing. If if it does happen, here's what's going to happen. Andrew, you are you're the person. Like he's just got that. I've got this thing about him. You're delivering the baby. I said Cooper's catching it. <laughs> And, you know, you know, it, it, and Kelly's going to be the nurse. Scripted, yeah. I'm just going to be there just to, you know, you know, read the instructions or, or off of YouTube. But um, <laughs> well, you could call it. You could actually do. The no, no, no. That, for that if you wanted. I'm good with that. But like, no, Adele's about to have his baby soon, too. So you see in all these pictures, just the, the mixture of people. Right. And so it was it was that it was it was pure joy. It was pure joy. And. Aaron Donald, he is such a great guy, He's such a great dad, such a great player, such a great leader in the team. And this is like I was saying, when you see Aaron Donald with his shirt off, you know it's going to be fun, right? Like this well, is Aaron party. Donald needs a Look shirt. Look how happy he kid. is. Someone give him a shirt. <laughs> No, no, never, no, never, never give him a shirt. Never wear a shirt. <laughs> I'm speaking, for, I'm like speaking for all women everywhere. Never give him a shirt. And, and you're Erica, speaking for Chris Brock and me. me. I mean, I mean, yeah, if you don't have, if you're gonna have a man crush, have it on Aaron Donald. Yes. Yeah, have please. it on Aaron Donald. So he was so happy, and you know, Les said he he, he came and and hugged him. There's a great shot I have. It's it's my favorite picture that I got, which was you know Aaron and Les and Matthew Stafford, and they were all together, and I had just managed to get there right when, you know, they were all three together, and Aaron has this look on his face, and he had said to Les, like, thank you, like, you changed my life, right? You changed my life, and Les is like, uh, you, you changed mine too, right? I mean, come on. How could you ever, like, do this without an Aaron Donald on your team? He's just the best. He's just the best. So great, great, great day. And to be able to have it with your kids too, it's it's pretty great. And then you told Les to go home and, and make the bed. Uh he's just, he's more <laughs> a dishes guy. Yeah. He's a real good dishes guy. Like, you know, the bed's not really his his thing, but he does like he does like doing the dishes. I'm well, sure Rich does too. Oh <laughs> yeah. It's great. Just as just as methodical. <laughs> Back on Peacock, I'm Susie Schuster in for Rich Eisen. Kara Henderson Sneed in for all hour here, hour number two of the Rich Eisen Show, because we needed some behind the scenes of Rams victory 2022. We've Ooh. got mimosas. We've got a little champs. We're about on. to crack our second bottle. Hoskins, here we go. Hoskins, take me. In three. three. Who's house? Oh, Whoa, oh, nicely done. <laughs> you know what's funny? It's a celebration. It, when I hear I Love L.A., the iconic song, because of my experience, it's a Lakers song, right? Because right. I, 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 I literally hear that, and I think of Shaq and Kobe, the three-peat, the second time around, what have you. And you got to have it with the Rams. I know. I think it's um, it's really fun to be a part of, you know, a big city championship. And, and – Obviously, I mean all the all the team well, all the teams have had a lot of success recently here. So it's fun to be a part of that, right? Like to feel like, okay, we're giving, you know, and and you saw if you saw Aaron Donald on the James Corden show, I'm sorry if I'm dropping another show and I should not supposed to do that, but he was unbelievably great on that. But you could tell how much it meant to him to win for the city and to get like the key to the city and like for him to like for you to feel like you're delivering something to these fans, which as the, the guys were talking about, you know, my Twitter account and I was able to give some tickets away to NFC championship game. But like it's been the joy of my last two weeks, really like c- communicating with all our rabid fans on Twitter. And if you my I'm at Kara Henderson on Twitter, if you want to see some of the funniest celebration videos from winning the Super Bowl, go and just scroll through 
And I would just sit there for like the other night I was there for like two hours, just going through all of these people's celebration videos. And every time we, every time Aaron Donald sacked Joe Burrow, it's like you had that same feeling over and over again, but you got it from different perspectives in the stadium, different people's, you know, garages, big parties, small, you know, this one guy, his two young kids were asleep upstairs. So he was trying to celebrate, but do it as like a silent film. Almost. It was hilarious. So that's it. Like when you get to meet the real rabid Rams fans and, and know that they've been fans through our move to St. Louis and back and deliver this to them. It's awesome. It really is. You know, you mentioned LA and in the parades, a lot was said about LeBron saying he wanted to be a part of the parade. Now, it's been since 2017. It's been a minute. So you can't really jump on the parade bandwagon if you're... Uh, I, I think the statue of limitation should probably be, I don't know, a year or two. Maybe if it's during COVID, what have you. But you can't just drop back into the parade route. If well, you yeah. If and you look, I mean, parade. LeBron's had many, many parades. Let us have our first parade first, <laughs> right? <laughs> we... we We've never been in a parade before. But um, you have now. Kara yes. Henderson Sneed here on the Rich Eisen Show. Welcome back to all of you listening on the radio, those of you watching on Peacock. However you're taking in this Rich Eisen Show, thank you. Uh, a virtual mimosa to you on this Mimosa Friday. So <laughs> happy to have you joining us here in any way that you can. Back to the parade. I've been able to have at least one drink for every listener watcher out there over the last two weeks. <laughs> and as well, that's you my should. that's my service to the community. And as well, yeah. you should. You're You've been near, near sober for a moment since you guys won. And I can say that it's so funny since you guys won the Super Bowl. I, I am just along for the ride, literally. Probably good that I'm not driving. Um, no, but seriously, it's, uh, it's, you do feel a part of it. And, you know, you, you, as, a, as a family member, you go through so much. You go through so much to get here. I mean, I, when we, I mean, the year that I went back to NFL Network and was, was, went back as an executive and, and then I left again, it was because I was like, okay, I don't know what's going to happen next. I mean, we started out three and one. We ended up going four and 12. Does Les get fired? There's a very distinct possibility he could. I'm not, a, you know, naive. I'm like, I cover football for a living. Like a lot of four and 12 GMs get fired. And then they had the wherewithal to go and hire Sean. And so, you know, when you go through the, the roller coaster that is the NFL, and then you finally get to push it all the way to the top and, and sit there for a minute. It you really do it. You you sit there and think about all those years and all of those things that took getting there. And it's um, it does. It continues to like you. You process it and it washes over you more and more as you go. What don't we know about Sean McVay? Oh man, I I love that human being so much. I you know, I'll never forget. When Les came home and said, I really think we're going to hire the 30 year old. Right. Because <laughs> it, it was at the point where it was like people are like they're interviewing a 30 year old to be the head coach. And he's like, I, and I was like, you've got to be kidding me. Come on. No. Well, I mean, I, I've got genes older than him. Right. <laughs> like genuinely that old trope. So but I went and he's like, you've got to come and meet him. And he's like, Marshall's going to be there. So Marshall Falk, obviously, we're all very close with Marshall as well. And I was like, okay, wait a minute. If Marshall is giving this guy the thumbs up, I've been around Marshall enough to know that he's, you know, he does not suffer fools. He does not suffer people that you don't know what they're talking about. If he gives him the thumbs up. And I met Sean, and within 10 seconds, I just looked at Les, and it was like, I get it. He is um, this rare combination it's not rare it's unique he is the unique combination of a people person who genuinely meets every single player in that organization where they are and tries to make them the best versions of themselves not what he wants them to be the best versions of themselves so there's that and he cares so deeply about each and every one of them he's an emotionally like such an empathetic human being. And so you have that, and then you have the most brilliant football mind that you could ever talk to. Anytime I'm talking to him about football, I feel like I'm talking to somebody who's splitting the atom and I'm back in basic math. And I feel like I know a lot 
a lot about football, but I mean, you get to talking to him and you're like, oh, this is this is rare. So all of us have met people who are really brilliant tacticians in football. They have a tendency to be a little bit more wonky and a little less people driven and very, you know, uh, you know, mad professor types. He's got both things in spades. And so you you just love the fact that he can I mean, he can do both things, which is so rare and which is why our team has the personality and the success that they that they've had. I can say this to you because you're a journalist. We've got a minute to a hard out. I feel it's really nice. Oh, no, I got it. I got a minute. So I want to hear in a minute. What are your thoughts on next year? Because obviously you can't share bedroom secrets, but I want to know what you think about what it looks like for this team. Well, I think I think this. I think whatever people may have been thinking about before we won, when you win with a group of people like this, and you heard people say it at the parade, you heard them, like, you heard Aaron Donald say it, if you can get this group of people back together, like, without the pressure of having to go win a Super Bowl, but the possibility of it, I think it's I, I think I think it's a distinct possibility that you end up with this same group of people back together. I hope so. Six. I hope so. We heard it here. Run it back. Run it back. Let's run it back. Run it back. Much more when we come back. So let me explain for all of you on Peacock the nature of this relationship. So we've known each other since we were twenty three years old and worked in Bristol, Connecticut. Rich was a budding sports center anchor. Budding. You said budding. Did you see where she said budding there? That was great. No, I didn't budding. mean that he was a little uh, chunky Charlie. Did I say that? I didn't say that, did I? Wow. Budding? Believe I mean, me, what after do you these think? two weeks, I'm not calling anybody chunky Charlie. <laughs> Rich was this cherubic looking sports center anchor. Wow. Wow. I don't think I'm selling anybody down the river that I don't sell down the river seven days a week. No. <laughs> Kara's hiding under the, underneath the hat. Okay, fine. Shall I set the table? The two of us are in Bristol. We would walk by each other in the hallways. Bristol was a tough place back then. This well, is not and let's a, be clear. Uh, like, I was, like, you know, probably in some baggy jeans and whatever. And Susie was, like... I don't like, like where Susie this is going. was, like, no, nope, no, nope. I mean it. Like, you were just, like, fierce. She was, like, strolling by in her... Black pants, and she was Leslie going Visser somewhere to do important dress things. For the job you wanted, not well, the job I was you had. Just try, I was just trying to get through the day. That being said, <laughs> she all? and Rich were best friends, and still are best friends to this day. How many years later? How old are we? Well, 25 years later. 30, right, 30, so anyway. 31? 25 years later. <laughs> to make a long story short, she meets Les. Les and I get each other. Like Rich and I get each other, too. A lot of Bertie Higgins singing in their kitchen. So here's what happens. Key Largo, in here's case what happens. Those are wondering. These two knuckleheads get together. We are knuckleheads when we get Second, together. Second, third, fourth glass of whatever. The karaoke happens. <laughs> oh. Or it's just the background of Sonos. And they're like, we had it all. And then they just start singing. <laughs> Les and I look at each other like, can we go to bed now? Like, Yeah, like, you guys are, are eating kale idiots, over right? in the corner. And, and Rich and I are like on our ninth bottle of rosé. And oftentimes when I was <laughs> traveling for ABC Sports, people would say, oh, I saw you out with Rich last week. I'm like, no, no that was Kara. <laughs> I'm sorry that they, they thought that because I'm sure we <laughs> were like, moron. you know, doing something somewhere that was. You know, Susie, it might be a good time. I don't know if we have enough time. A few months ago, Rich had brought up something and he said, next time Susie's here, ask her about the ultimatum. And he refused to tell us. And he Uh-oh. said, when you're here. So oh, I don't no, know if this ultimatum? is a, I don't three. know if we have enough time with Karen and Cher. Maybe Uh-oh. she can stay till the next 30 seconds? Wait, wait. Mike Hoskins just said 30 <laughs> seconds, 29, 28. <laughs> What's the oh, ultimatum? 10 seconds Seven, left. Six. Shaquille O'Neal when we come back as well as Amy Trask. The ultimatum. Thank you, Kara. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here. 